earlier today, yesterday actually, because it's kind of late. Um, I talked about uh, the Sapiens book, and in particular went into his uh, his discussion. I, I haven't done the full full book discussion yet, but I wanted to touch his discussion about uh, the law of religion and how. Among these myths that he defines and whatever, uh, religion and ideology, which he also considers essentially a religion, are um, among the, these stories that we tell ourselves. And although I very briefly touched on it, I failed to get to the thing that triggered me um, in a good way, in the sense of thinking. Um, which is that from his definition, let me, let me find it again. <laughs> I don't remember where I had it. Um... In a particular uh, definition for what, re yeah, religion is a system of human norms and values that is founded on belief in a superhuman order. Okay. By that definition, and it's the first time I've seen a definition that embraces so broadly that, you know, it covers the idea of. Uh, ideology along with religion. Now people have often said things like communism is uh, you know is essentially a religion is essentially a religion and in a lot of ways you can you can map you know from the roles in, in a formal uh, hierarchical religion to the communist parties in various countries and to the ideology and to the prophet, uh, you know, being Marx, obviously, and, and stuff along those lines. And it feels really good. It feels probably a little shakier to start trying to say things like that about capitalism, but I think he does a good job of making that uh, distinction as well. What he didn't do is touch that third rail, <laughs> which is the reason that I wanted to go into this at all, and why I went to that uh, went to that chapter, um, and, and in any detail, which is the concept of scientism. Scientism is something that uh, I've long sort of seen as an existing equivalent, in the same way that ideolo ideological uh, type things like um, uh, like communism or capitalism are similar to religions, so too you can say with science. Um, and why is it a third rail? Well, because we are so imbued with science and as being the polar opposite of religions, right, that we can't see the parallel as easily. Or we recoil from it because, oh no, science tells us true things. Well, hmm. the more you get into, into the history of science and scientific theory and whatnot, uh, and by which I mean the theory of how to do science, uh, no. <laughs> um, science itself is more embodied in the scientific method than anything else. But I can give you some, some key elements that uh, generate those parallels, right? Uh, it has its initial founding prophets and saints and whatever. Whatever you want to go back to there. Um, and like with more modern religions, hey, it, it, and by more modern I mean, you know, things like the monotheistic uh, aspects of the Judeo-Christian Islamic uh, faith and, and, and whatnot. Uh, the ones that come a little later than the Bronze Age probably held. Uh, it does draw back on that. 
You know, if you look back to uh, the scholastics, uh, the, you know, in, in like the 13th century, if you look back to the Muslim scholars that predated that by a little bit, you'll see they were doing science, you know, uh, they, were, they were doing uh, things like calculus had been apparently invented uh, by the scholastics long before, uh, you know, you have uh, Newton doing it. Some of uh, Descartes' work appeared, not, not the stupid stuff, not the I think therefore I am argument, which, although that, that okay, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I, you can make an argument that that also was derivative, but it's kind of funny because he's like, oh, wipe away all these scholastics. They didn't know anything and everything. Whereas there's stuff that he actually probably was aware of that they had done. Um, but you can argue, look, that's just proto-science or, or, or something along that line. It, it's not really being done under the, the, the guise of religion. Well, it actually was. It was being done by monks who, you know, are investigating the world around them as scientists would, but also I would argue as the religious uh, tend to do as well. As an example that I pointed out on Facebook to someone, you can't have, uh, you can't make some kind of statement like uh, religions are just disconnected from the real world or anything like that. They're not. If, if you look back to, you know, the Neolithic uh, sites where they were building these giant calendars, they had to observe the world to understand how it worked, and they provided technological solutions uh, that were useful, right? Now, you didn't need Stonehenge to determine the, the different, uh, you know, when the seasons were going to come or whatever. But if you wanted something that would last through the centuries, you kind of need something that big and that, that potent. And it just combined, you know, maybe a reverence for the natural world in addition, we don't really know everything about it, but in addition to some things that were useful to the agriculture of the time and that fit their mythological uh, existence. And look, on top of all of that, there were problems with, there are problems with religions and whatnot. They tell you things, they have stories that are fake and whatnot. They have hierarchies that cause problems, etc. Um, but <laughs> clearly they also served a purpose. Now, if we want to look at other parallels in science, you can look at the sort of restrictive nature that the, the institutes of, of learning place on, I'm going to say scientific dogma. Uh, now, part of that dogma is something that is very useful, which is that you can show that something is false. Right? And in fact, the idea of um, uh, repudiability is really vital to modern sciences uh, outside of mathematics, which may or may not be a science. It may, <laughs> it may be more like a religion than anything else, which is why, of course, that's where, uh, uh, that, that, that's where um, the scholastics were able to make so much effort. But let's take a look at that definition. You, you can say it's, you know, if, if you don't want to say that it's a religion, fine. Again, as he puts it, it might be a semantic difference. Uh, and, you know, okay. Is it an ideology? I don't know. But it fits this. It is a system of human norms and values that are founded on belief in a superhuman order. The superhuman order being the laws of nature that we're trying to discover as well as um, uh, the tools by which we have found that we can best, um, 
we can best express them and discover them uh, or, or express the laws. Now, here's the thing. A lot of people say, look, you know, your ideologies, your religions, they're based on a faith. There might be logical arguments in, in favor of them. You know, like I said in, in my other discussion, the Thomists came up with a logical, well, St. Thomas came up with a logical argument for the existence of God. Um, <laughs> uh, like all such logical arguments, though, it has some axioms underlying it, which you kind of have to take on faith. And if you just go down to, okay, I believe what's written in the St. James edition of the Bible as, uh, as it's come to us, or uh, I believe, what, not St. James, King James. Uh, um, or I believe in, you know, deciphering the earlier texts uh, and, and, and trying to come to what, what is uh, correct there, or I believe in the uh, uh, the Sumerian writings that predated and the Bible, the, the Old Testament is der derived from, all, all kind of stuff like that. Any of these is an act of faith, right? So what is the act of faith that underlies science? Well, I would say the most pro prominent one is the simple idea that our observations uh, that we have are reflective of an underlying reality. And you have to be kind of careful with that because you can very quickly, per, uh, you know, uh, disavow anything along the lines of, well, human observation is indicative of, of reality. It may not be. There's things like hallucinations and whatnot. That's not what I'm talking about here. That's not the attack that I would make on... That, that's not the primary attack that I would make on scientism. The more and more we find out through the use of the scientific method about what reality is actually like, the more and more we start to see that it actually doesn't seem to be anything like what this great processing center uh, uh, that allows us to survive and whatnot um, and has evolved to take input data about the world around us and provide us with, you know, reasonable information <laughs> that we can act on. It doesn't feel at all like what we actually experience has anything to do with the reality that's underlying it. For example, simple things like gravity. We see gravity, we drop something, okay, and, you know, things fall. That's sort of the first thing. But then you take that further, you take it to Newtonian physics, and you say, okay, uh, there's a, there, there appears to be an attraction between bodies. But the actuality that we're starting to describe, uh, well, in, in the past century or so, in, in, uh, in science, is saying there's this space-time continuum that gets warped by heavy objects. That is nothing like what we see. and doesn't even really make sense until you start expanding it beyond things we can even experience directly, okay? So then what we're saying is that the special tools, uh, you could almost say the oracles, that can't be a planet, it's moving. Um, the oracles that we uh, align to the universe and that give us this information, these electronic devices, etc., that we can, you know, within the confines of our science, we can say they all make sense and they can all be provable, etc. Well, when you're starting to talk about stuff like that, you're starting to sound a whole lot like people 
who are making arguments about transubstantiation from the biblical, biblical text, right? You're within a specialized confine that is no longer available to all of us. It's only really available to the, to the priests. Now, can you, anyone become a priest? Well, anyone with enough intelligence can indoctrinate themselves into scientism to the extent that they too understand right? Becomes kind of like a, a, a mystery religion in a sense, right? But one that's fairly available. Um, but what if you refuse? <laughs> what if you just don't buy into it? Um, in addition, you, you have, um, you know, your dogma, which is a, a, a protected sort of um, Things that are known, can they be upset? Yes, and they can be upset much less violently than uh, previous religions, dogmas can. That's a good thing. It's a good thing. What I'm just saying is that in nature, there's something very, very similar. And that leap of faith, look, we have people postulating now that the universe is just a simulation. That time is nothing at all like we see it as. That it goes both backwards and forwards. And we're just limited because of our movement. <laughs> um, there are just so many things that we're left with as kind of a... These things do not seem at all intuitive and believable and whatever. And you can get the same kind of unbelievability within the realms of mathematics. Uh, things like the Monty Hall problem, which I'm not going to go into discussion here, but you can Google it if you, if you want to, just seem phenomenally unbelievable until you reason them out. You know? uh, and that is one that you can reason out. But then you're left with, uh, you know, there were many years where I was aware of what the answer was, but couldn't believe it, right? And much better mathematicians, you know, ones who were much uh, uh, more, uh, had put much more of their life's effort into probability and whatnot, uh, were equally dumbfounded by the answer, right? Um, and, and now it's kind of the accepted answer, but in a lot of ways, that accepted answer feels very much like the kind of um, uh, movements that happen within, within a theology, right? <laughs> In many, many ways. Sure, um, if something cannot be disproven, if there's no test that could disprove something, that's a, that's a nice, pretty, thing to, to state, right? And it seems very appealing, but it seems very appealing because we've grown up with this, okay? Uh, that would be meaningless to the majority of people in the Middle Ages, whereas it's in the Bible seems perfectly reasonable to them. And there are cultures, even in, you know, even in the prosperous West, uh, in our modern era, where that same kind of, you know, so what? <laughs> uh, what it comes down to is we're looking at a conflict in belief systems. And when it comes down to, okay, why has science been winning out against religion? Because they have fought, right? I mean, the Catholic Church tried to stamp out early scientific arguments uh, that conflicted, even conflicted in very minor ways that don't seem to be that important, right? Um, why is science winning out? Well, why did Christianity win out over the pagan religions? Because it was better linked or not, it was better uh, at 
providing for uh, the, 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 the stability of the society, the future, whatever. So, you know, when the Crusaders came in and started cutting off the heads of the Odin worshippers and telling them, look, convert or die, well, your God is stronger. Your God can beat us up. And in a similar sort of way, the God of the scientists is stronger and has been beating up uh, in a different field. You know, we don't go up to people and say, believe in science or die, but we have better technological results from that ideological religious basis than uh, simply say believing in the, 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 that the Bible represents the word of God and everything in that is true and everything which conflicts with that is false regardless of uh, what your perceptions, etc., may be and what proofs could be put there. And that's what I mean when I say scientism. Um, I mean that we have created another model, another structure, which serves in a very similar way to how religions operate, and even more so how they operated in the past, where they were the answer to truths. And there are things that uh, what one would call the scientific elite are able to suppress for a while. Perhaps not forever. <laughs> uh, but there are theories, etc., that become that uh, are, are ch too challenging and have a great deal of difficulty until the proof becomes overwhelming and before that they're seen as very fringy. Um, you know, and then there are channels that we go down that have a bunch of, of support within the establishment, like string theory somehow or another, it seems weird as hell, but somehow or another got a whole bunch of support. Founded on kind of nothing and it's beginning to look pretty damn uh, unlikely <laughs> as time goes on. Um, on the other hand, quantum theory, which looks equally ridiculous, is pretty much accepted at this point. Uh, people are, you know, working with it <laughs> and, and being able to demonstrate uh, some, of, some, of, some of the elements that, that have been uh, predicted. Where, where am I going with this? Yeah, so it was kind of nice to see a definition that would have included scientism. The, the thing that saddens me about the book is that he doesn't call that out. When, to me, it was the obvious, right? Uh, not just secular humanism, not just uh, evolutionary... Uh, <laughs> humanism or whatever he wants to call the Nazis, um, not just some of these, these other um, ideological standpoints, but that what we hold as our scientific community overall, uh, across different branches, etc., really fits into, into his definition in, in, a, in a rather nice way. And that's something that pleases me. Um, now, he makes this distinction of, okay, maybe you don't want to call communism, capitalism, etc., religions. Maybe you don't want to call liberalism a religion. You want to change it to ideology and create some sort of distinction between whether or not there's a worship of gods invoked in it. But then he says, well, then you have to take things like Buddhism and move them out of the religion category too because they really don't belong there any more than um, some, some of these other uh, ideologies, some of these ideologies that, 
that we express. And there's kind of a, eh, yeah, I always kind of saw Buddhism as a religion. What's up with that, right? Um, I, I would say whatever those structures are, you'd want an encompassing term to cover all of them. And if you can't use religion, that's fine. But what term are you going to use? Are you going to use ideology for, you know, something that overarches and includes religion? In that case, you have, you know, what, theistic and non-theistic <laughs> ideologies. That's fine. That's fine. And scientism seems overwhelmingly agnostic towards the question of, is there a God or not? Um, I know a lot of people are relatively atheists who, who, uh, who are, uh, you know, who, who devote their lives to, to scientific exploration. But there are a fair number uh, of, of deists there as well, or theists or whatever you want to call them. Um, and sometimes they have to kind of wriggle to get their answer. Like, I've definitely seen the argument of God is the sum of the laws of nature. Okay, fine. You know, that doesn't sound like an intelligent uh, thing. And, you know, if you want to worship Yag Sagath or whatever, okay, you know. Um, I've, I've seen another, I, I've had another... Uh, uh, acquaintance of mine um, who put it as he saw God as the laws of mathematics. The mathematics that describes the laws of nature is God. That's a little bit more subtle and I think a cleverer way to look at it. It still doesn't feel like it's an intelligent thing but it's kind of interesting because the mathematics there is something that we create. Isn't it? It's sort of our language to describe the reality. And if that's God, well then we're creating God. Now, I, I got into this discussion with someone as well, which was, uh, and, and this was where really the heart of, uh, one of one of my distinctions and why I started using the word scientism again, which was um, that theists believe that God created man and scientists believe that man created God. Well, no, not all scientists do, first of all. Uh, but I would actually argue that both can be true at the same time. Um, the concept of a god, or of gods, or of spirits, or whatever, might be myths and stories that we tell ourselves, as he would portray. But I would also argue that without those concepts, without the concept of supernatural stuff, without the concept of a god, or gods, we may have never have become human, <laughs> right? Like, it's kind of like if you were to argue, did man, does man make fire or did fire make man? Well, maybe if we had never discovered fire and had it, you know, inter interacting with our being, we wouldn't be anything like what we are. Same thing with language. Did man make language or did language make man? Yeah, they're both the same thing. Now, animals before man had language. Uh, we know this. We, we, we can find um, uh, other animals that utilize what appears to be linguistic capabilities to a limited extent. Nowhere near to what we have. But in a way, our expansion of language seems to be what created us, what made our brains bigger, whatever. Um, 
And I would argue that there's a whole bunch of things like that, you know, uh, that a lot of things that you would say, well, obviously man made that. I would also argue that man wouldn't be what they are in terms of thinking whatever without the effect of the things that you can say we created, right? Um, a chimpanzee can take a stick and turn it into a tool to get, uh, to get ants out of an anthill. Well, somewhere along that line of tool making and tool use, right? Something that is obviously the animal is doing something, using something, making it into a tool, but the tool is making them into something else in the evolutionary structure. That's kind of the argument that I'm making along those lines. Uh, that's just really a, a, a side talk, but it came, came from something, you know, from a conversation I had on, on Facebook uh, or someone to uh, comment on. Anyway, I'm going to send this up. <laughs> it helped me avoid uh, playing more Clash of Sovereigns when it comes down to it.